a filhos nisso. Né? Settle for that. Like so we have got this adjuster on here. But that's nice, there's no rock, no play. It's gripping, but it's not too tight, that's just. That's the dog's bollocks, as they say. The dog's bollocks. Right. Next thing is to part it off. You can replicate the divisions on the end of there. I think I know how I'm going to do it. In hindsight, I wish I'd made a new nut as well and made it imperial. I do like imperial, but not worry. One thing you must do when you finish screw cutting, disengage the feed nut and put the gearbox in neutral. It's so easy just to start the lathe up in ordinary gear instead of back gear and the tool goes crashing into the, into the chuck. The next thing is I'm going to part it off and I'm going to leave plenty of metal, plenty of meat left to play with until I decide what I'm going to do as far as putting it, some sort of drive into it, like a hex and indexing it and dividing it up into 10 degree space parts. I've got an idea how I'm going to do it, but uh, plenty of lubricant when you're parting off and a nice constant feed run back off. When you back, back it, once you back off, that's when the tool digs in and snaps. This is just a high speed steel parting blade. Nothing, nothing elaborate. I'll finish it off with a hacksaw so I didn't drop the part and damage the, the thread. I keep mentioning that. One of the best things you can make to protect your lathe bed, you can... Like what I'll do, I'll use this bit here to practice how I'm going to do the end of that. I had a bit mess about with the, the end that I parted off there, the spare end. Um, I've dr I drilled it and tapped it and I put an 8mm domed head cap it onto it. And I've had a good indexing on the outside of it. Uh, I'm not happy with that. I think what I'll do, I'll drill it and tap it 6mm and screw that in so that ends up flush. And that'll be used to drive it. It's a smaller alley key but for the use it's going to get, it'll, it'll certainly do the job. That'll be set in through there, counter some flush, then I can index that. Indexing is going to be the, the fun part of the whole job, I think. So I'm going to, I'm going to grip this in a collet because you can get a, a big long, it's grip on a long area and the collet won't damage the threads where the three jaw chuck would. So that'll be going into there. It's running nice and true, that's one thing about the collet, you can, you can take some of it out and put it back in, you can guarantee it's running within half a thou.
Right now we need a counter sink in there so that the cap head goes in flush. Drop the Loctite. I was going to harden that with it being silver steel, I could harden it, but for what it's going to do, it's never ever going to wear away in my lifetime. Right. I took the very light cut across the front of it, and that feels that's good. So, what we need now is just dividing up into 10 equally spaced divisions. It's a 1 mil thread, so a 1 full turn is going to move the tool 1 mil. A tenth of a turn is going to move the tool 0.1. Honestly, I think 0.1 is enough to line up by eye on the divisions that I'm going to put on here. Any more than that, and I'll put a clock gauge on, and I'll use a clock gauge to adjust the tool. So I'm going to split this up into 10. I'm going to use the, the dividing head that we made. To do the, to split it up, I'm going to put it onto the cross slide. It's also a key onto the cross slide, so it's got to be in line with the lathe. It was bored on the lathe, so it's got to be on dead on centre height. Okay. And so what we'll do is we'll take the collar chuck off complete. And put the collar chuck onto there. Transfer straight across onto there. Put a drill chuck in the a drill chuck in there to hold the the cutter. Right, the cutter I'm going to use it's a two mil milling cutter. It's the smallest one I've got. This should be run ideally at three or four thousand RPM. All I can get out of this machine is fourteen hundred, so I'll just have to be very, very, very careful. That's all. I said that's an eighty tooth gear divided into ten. So all we we'll do, we'll lift our little dead end. That goes into there, and there's a spindle lock as well. And we'll just move around like that, indexing each one. Right, that's what two mil cutter. You can tell by looking at it wants to snap off. I'll zero me cross slide at that. Out oh, and then into, into zero. That puts it where I want it. Right, the depth of cut, all I want is 5 thou depth of cut, just to try and give the milling cut every possible chance of surviving. So we'll fetch up till we touch, which is there, zero our clock gauge. We'll back that off into zero, five thousandths, and I'll lock off. Carriage at that. Right, so I, I set up for the first cut. I put a little bit of little bit of oil on and start the lathe up. It wind itself up with full. It's full 1400. And we'll wind the cross slide out so it says zero, and that should give us our first very gently. A 
do it again. Out of zero. Okay. Right, so that's our first one. Simply release my dead end. That locks in. There's a lock on the spindle as well, a lock that. Start the machine up and gently wind my first side out to zero. Starting to cut there. Right, that's the finished thing. Ten equally spaced divisions. I mean, even I can see them. So that's going to give you 0.1 of a mil movement on each division. Like I see, I'll be working in pool anyway, so I've just got to put a clock gauge on it. But at least you have got some sort of reference point. If I had some smaller cut as you could have split that again. I mean, it might well be worth making a, like an engraving tool, so I can do divisions. Anyway. We'll put it back together and see how it works. Right, it seems to be all functioning nicely. We get a close up of the inside of it. Nice and smooth. There's the dial. So each one of them is 0.1 of a mil. Very happy with that. Wish it hadn't happened, but uh, I'm quite pleased with the repair. Index in each one. Ah, you bastard! That shop. Look at that. I want to do something with that bastard pin in there. Oh, that's the first blood of the new year. I bet it's not the friggin' last. <laughs> 